From snorkeling in the Bahamas to eating the best Wagyu steak ever, the Disney cruise ships have some of the most unique vacation activities that you're so not going to want to miss. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. So while the Disney cruise ships are known for being a more laid back vacation experience as opposed to the parks, that doesn't mean you're gonna be bored wondering how on earth you're gonna pass the time while out at sea. Disney cruises are designed in such a way that you can do as much or as little as you want to each day. But to help paint a clearer picture of what offerings you're gonna find on each of these world-class ships, we're gonna cover all the different activities across all the different Disney cruises today, including the ones you're gonna need to make advance reservations for ahead of your trip if you wanna prioritize those. Well, our main focus today is gonna to be the five Disney cruise ships you can sail on right now, including the Magic, Wonder, Fantasy, Dream, and Wish. There is a new cruise ship that'll be joining the fleet next year called the Disney Treasure. If you wanna learn more about the sixth ship that'll be entering the fleet in 2024, be sure to download our free Disney Treasure Guide by scanning the QR code you see on the screen now or by heading to disneyfoodblog.com treasure right after this. We're gonna start with one of the most popular things to do on the Disney Cruise Line. Everybody and their mother likes to do this, and that's the stage shows. If you think live entertainment goes away just because you're in the middle of the ocean, you would be wrong. For each cruise, you'll typically have the chance to watch one to two Broadway-style performances on select evenings inside the Walt Disney Theater. You'll also be able to see a specialty variety show featuring a conglomeration of several fan-favorite Disney tunes. Now here's a quick look at all of the specific stage shows going on for each Disney cruise. Typically, there are two different showings for each performance to accommodate guests in their different dining times. However, for a brand new, super popular musical, there might also be an additional showing earlier on in the day. Show times are always subject to change, so it's important to check the Disney Cruise Line Navigator app for specifics on available shows and dates and times. By the way, we're gonna talk about the new Nav app multiple times throughout today's video, cause it's literally your key to figuring out what's going on around the ship at all times. So if you're planning on cruising with Disney soon, go ahead and get that free app downloaded onto your phone before you go. Okay, back to the performances. Stage shows are typically around an hour long, so you'll still have plenty of time to fit in other activities and experiences throughout the evening. And who knows, maybe those other experiences include more shows. Along with the Walt Disney Theater performances, the ships also have other live music and entertainment going on throughout the day and evening. And this includes bands in the main atrium, piano bar performances at lounges, and little humorous skits that promote other ship activities. Again, the Nav app can help you find out what's going on and when, though it's also kind of fun to just stumble upon these musical acts when you're passing through the ship, since you can come and go and appreciate them as you please. Sitting in a dark theater and watching a movie when you could be out on the top deck sunbathing may not be a selling point for every cruiser, but Disney cruises make the idea very enticing. And this is something that I will tell you right now, my mother does all the time. <laughs> if you're cruising on the Disney Magic, the Wonder, the Fantasy, or the Dream, you'll be able to watch films in the Buena Vista Theater. If you're cruising on the Wish, you'll have two theaters to choose from, the Wonderland and the Neverland Theaters. No matter which theater you wind up in, you'll have the opportunity to not only watch popular Disney films, but also Disney films that are still in theaters. These are first run shows, y'all. In some cases, Disney films that haven't even been released to the public yet. Showtimes are listed on your nav app as well as right outside each theater. If you want to watch a film but don't want to watch it during the day when so many other activities are going on, each theater also has very late night showings of their films too, so if you've still got some energy left over after a long day aboard the ship, you can always choose to hit up one of those 9pm, 11pm showings instead. You might be the only one in the theater. So while there are a lot of ways to hang out with the whole family on a Disney cruise, there are also ways to split up and enjoy your own thing so that everyone's wishes have the opportunity to be granted. All the cruise ships provide kids and teen clubs to keep the youngins entertained. For the kids, you're gonna have the Oceaneer Club for ages three to 12, and when kids are checked into the Oceaneer Club, they enter a common hub area and other themed activity rooms split off from this main room. A stage in the main area provides a platform for kids to express their creativity and storytelling, and it's the center piece of the club when Disney characters stop by to visit. There are big screen TVs showing movies that may feature a surprise Disney character interaction from time to time. Here's a glimpse at what different themes your kids are going to find in these clubs depending on which ship you sail. I know lots of possibilities that cater to a lot of different personalities and preferences. 
Along with the Oceaneer Club, the Disney Magic, Wonder, Fantasy, and Dream also have Oceaneer Labs, where kids can get creative in spaces with daily hands-on activities. For tweens ages 11 to 14, you've got the Edge Clubs, which give kids a chance to hang out with others their own age to play games and have dance or karaoke parties, engage in counselor-led activities, or just play video games for the afternoon. And then there's the teen spaces like Vibe for ages 14 to 17. Vibe is a laid-back club where technology and social media reign supreme. Here you're going to find giant screens complete with surround sound for watching movies, a refreshment bar with smoothies and coffees aplenty, and several counselor-led activities. If you're cruising on the dream or fantasy, Vibe extends to a private deck area outside. Poolside deck chairs and loungers offer sunbathing and access to two wading pools and fountains and jets and misters, as well as a ping pong and foosball table. On the Disney Wish, there's actually an extra teen slash tween space called the Hideaway, which is adjacent to Vibe, but is more of a flex space to offer more room to spread out and more activities and more freedom while still having Disney Cruise counselors nearby. Adults who want to stop by these locations just to get a peek at what they're missing out on can stop by during open house hours, which you'll find listed on the Navigator app. Usually there's one on the first day for sure. The kids clubs on Disney Cruise Line are pretty intricate, so you'll more than likely want to stop by just to appreciate all the Imagineering. And let's not forget about the babies and toddlers out there. The It's a Small World nurseries are available for little ones six months to three years old. But unlike the kids clubs, the nursery does cost extra and you'll need to make sure you book it in advance. We'll talk more about advanced reservations for certain activities later on. Now, like I said, there's something for everyone on a Disney cruise, even for the adults, and especially for the adults. We'll talk about a few different adults-only activities today, but let's start off with the private oasis. Oasis? Oasises? that you can find on every ship. The Quiet Cove is an adults-only space with lounge chairs, a hot tub, a private pool, and a pool bar. While this space can get pretty popular in the afternoon and evening, you can experience it when it's way less busy by heading to the pool during breakfast time around 7 to 9 a.m. and opting for a later morning meal instead. Okay, if you are ready to party, go get your dancing shoes and your eye patches because you're going to need them. While each cruise is built around different stories and themes, some cruises have special themes happening around the ship, either all trip long or on a specific day. The classic specialty event that you can experience aboard any of the ships on any cruise is Pirate Night. This is the time where you can dress up in your best swashbuckling attire for an evening of pirate-themed deck parties and musical performances, character meet and greets, and fireworks shows, and all the characters as pirates too. Depending on how long your cruise is, you might even be able to order from an exclusive Pirates Night menu for dinner, which will give you lots of surf and turf options to choose from, but I haven't seen the Pirates Night menu for a while. Now, if you're sailing on the Disney Dream next year, some of their select cruises you can save the day with your favorite superheroes during a Marvel Day at Sea. This includes superhero meet and greets, the Marvel Heroes Unite Nighttime Spectacular, a big band show dedicated to Captain America, which is really, really good, and training sessions where select passengers will be fortunate enough to train alongside the Dora Milaje to become the next warriors of Wakanda. On the Disney Fantasy, certain cruises will offer a Pixar Day at Sea with more meet and greets, a Pixar Pals celebration performance, complete with a deck dance party, of course, an Incredibles themed fireworks spectacular, a puppetry performance that brings the story of Coco to life, and even a visit from your favorite totally awesome sea turtle crush during a totally awesome pool party. Depending on the time of year, your cruise might be all decked out for the holidays with seasonal decor, exclusive meet and greets, holiday performances, limited time treats, and several other their celebratory activities. Halloween on the High Sea runs from late September till Halloween, and Very Merry Time Cruises run from early November till December 24th. I can tell you from experience that if you're on a seven night Halloween on the High Sea cruise, you're gonna get really, really tired of Halloween music. Just a heads up, like it's always the same and it'll drive you crazy. Okay, rotational dining. We come to the point in the video with one of the biggest selling points of the Disney cruises, the themed rotational restaurants. Now they don't actually rotate. I say this all the time. <laughs> I wish they did. I wish the restaurants rotated, but they don't. You rotate between the restaurants. So each ship has three extensively themed, all-inclusive dining experiences, and you're going to eat at one of these restaurants each night of your cruise. You'll also have the same wait staff following you between dining rooms too, so they can get to know you and your dining preferences and your specific requests really well. While some ships have the same dining experiences as other Disney ships, other dining experiences are exclusive to one particular ship and one only. So here's a complete list of all the different themed rotational dining rooms that you can eat at on each ship. 
We do have specific reviews for every single one of these restaurants on these different Disney cruise ships already up on our channel. So if you'd like a more detailed look into each of these locations and their offerings, make sure to check out our ranking Disney Cruise Line restaurants video next. But for now, here's what you need to know about every single one of these restaurants. Each night, there are two different dining times for these restaurants. The first is the earlier time slot, which happens around 5.45 to 6 p.m., depending on the cruise. And the second is the later slot, which is around 8 to 8.30 p.m. You can choose which dining time you prefer ahead of your trip, but if you arrive for embarkation day and you happen to see you've been placed in the other time slot instead, make sure to head over to guest relations as soon as you board to see if you can get that switched. Cast members may not always be able to accommodate this request, but often they'll be able to work their magic and bibbity bobbity boo you into the dining time you originally requested. <laughs> And hi, yeah, I'm not done talking about food yet. Probably never will be, to be honest. In addition to the themed dining experiences, those restaurants you go to every night, there are also a bunch of adult exclusive restaurants aboard each of the ships for guests ages 18 and up. These are not included with the price of your stateroom, meaning you're gonna need to budget for these pricier meal experiences if you wanna make a reservation for them. Each ship in the Disney Cruise Line fleet, aside from the Wish, offers Palo, a luxurious restaurant that specializes in Northern Italian cuisine. The Disney Wish, on the other hand, and offers Palo Steakhouse, which is themed after Cogsworth from Beauty and the Beast and sells high quality steak cuts from melt in your mouth Australian Wagyu to succulent Japanese Kobe and Mizuyaki beefs. And who is Cogsworth without his best candlestick friend? Along with Palo Steakhouse, the Disney Wish also has Enchante, which is another premium dining experience inspired by Lumiere himself, featuring a gourmet menu by three Michelin-starred chef Arnaud Lallemont, who also helped create the menu for another signature cruise restaurant, Remy, which you're gonna find aboard the Disney Dream and the Fantasy. Reservations are required to eat at any of these signature locations, and you can start making reservations on the Disney Cruise Line website or from the Navigator app starting seven five days before your sail date if you're a first-time cruiser. The more you sail with Disney, the earlier you'll be able to book those reservations, which means you'll have a better chance of securing those popular activities before they're all sold out. If you try to book a reservation for one of these premium restaurants and find out they're already sold out, don't panic just yet. When you board the ship on embarkation day, go straight to that signature restaurant. Do not pass go, do not collect $200. There should be a host out front of the restaurant who'll be more than happy to put your name on a walk-up wait list. That way, if more availability does magically appear during the course of your cruise, they'll be able to message you, let you know that there is a table available if you want that last minute chance of dining fancy on the high seas. While a walk-up waitlist won't guarantee a last minute seat for you, it does definitely help increase your chances for getting one of those coveted tables. Okay, now this activity can often be the most popular throughout the day, so I'm not just going to tell you about it. I'm going to tell you how to bypass those ginormous queue lines completely in order to experience it without the huge mungus wait. A few of the Disney cruise ships have these super fun and super revolutionary water coasters on board. The Disney Dream and Fantasy have the Aqueduct, which will take you through a series of winding tubes, some of which are transparent so you can look out across the water as you're zooming on past. Kind of scary. And the Disney Wish has the Aqua Mouse, which is similar to the Aqua Duck, except that it uses screen-based technology to tell a story leading up to the twists and turns you'll take around the ship. Currently, there are two different storylines you could potentially get during your ride, the Scuba Scramble or the Swiss Meltdown. Next year, when the treasure comes online, you're going to have an extra story. And while this next ride isn't a water coaster, I still think the Aqua Dunk over on the Disney Magic deserves a shout out, because as far as thrilling water rides are concerned, Aqua Dunk is still the most intense of the three, since it's a drop slide with a trap door that'll literally send you plummeting from deck 13 and it makes my heart skip a beat every single time. I've ridden it one time and I think that's enough. So because these rides are fun for kids, teens, and grown-ups alike, they can accumulate really long lines during your days out at sea. Hmm, isn't this the reason we didn't book a Disney theme park vacation this time? To avoid lines, so what gives? Well, to avoid having to wait 30 plus minutes for any particular slide or coaster, try making a beeline to these rides right when they open. On embarkation day and castaway key day, the water coasters tend to open later, around 12 to 1 p.m., while on all the other days at sea, they usually open earlier, around 9 or 10. Again, these times are subject to change, so be sure to check your Navigator app to find out what specific times each ride is going to be open and operating during your visit. Other good times to visit are in the evenings during that whole dinner and show back and forth when most of the ship is either at dinner or at a show. If you aren't really excited by the menu at dinner, skip it and go ride the aqueduct a few times. And then you can order room service to your room later. Did I mention room service is free? Yeah, it is. 
Okay, so while Disney Cruise Line might not be known for its nightlife as much as some of the other cruise lines out there, that doesn't mean they're party poopers in the Disney scene. In fact, every Disney cruise ship has several lounges for you to hop between each evening. Here are just a few of the different lounges you can experience while on board the ships. The Dream and the Fantasy are home to Skyline, an upscale lounge that offers virtual views of the world's most scenic city horizons. The Disney Wonder features Cadillac Lounge, a glitzy place inspired by classic Hollywood that features nightly live piano music. La Piazza on board the Disney Fantasy has an incredible carousel themed bar. Fathoms on board the Disney Magic features live entertainment in an under the sea themed location. O'Gill's Pub is a lively pub on the Fantasy and Magic and Star Wars Hyperspace Lounge is an interactive tasting experience with drinks inspired by the film all set in a virtually enhanced space that transports you to iconic Star Wars locations. Now while most lounges are strictly for adults, a select few like Hyperspace will allow kids to swing by and check things out during the day before transforming into an adult's exclusive space by night. Now, it's time to go ashore. Don't worry, our cruise isn't done yet. We're just gonna head into some of the ports of call. What do you do after you've stepped off the boat? Well, that all depends on what you want to do. Each cruise is gonna take you to a different voyage. You might be sailing to a port of call like Skagway, Alaska, or somewhere on the Pacific coast. You might be pulling into Hawaii, or Norway, or the British Isles or someplace else entirely. While you're more than welcome to explore these overseas locations however you wish to, Disney also offers up a ton of port adventures by destination to help you build your day. There are literally hundreds of different options for you to choose from, but here are a few examples for now, just to give you an idea of what these adventures could look like. You could scuba dive in Bermuda, zip line in the Caribbean, stroll the black sand beaches of Hawaii, swim with dolphins in the Mexican Riviera, bike across the Panama Canal, and so much more. To see the full list of options, just head to the Port Adventures webpage on the Disney Cruise website. Some people will actually take a cruise based on the Port Adventures, things that they want to specifically do. So while Disney offers to help you book excursions through their website, you can also book experiences through a third-party site instead. Just keep in mind that if that third-party excursion runs a bit longer than expected, Disney's not going to hold the ship for you until your return. So just be sure to book any of those third-party excursions earlier on in the day rather than later so you don't have to feel rushed and stressed getting back to the ship before it sets sail once more. Now, quick side note, I know that Disney cruise planning can feel just as overwhelming as park planning sometimes, especially when we start talking about all the different extras you can book. But if you need any extra help with your cruise reservations and planning, do not be afraid to reach out to Small World Vacations. Those are the travel agents that we work with, and you can ask them for some free advice. These travel agents are great at helping choose activities and excursions that fit your interests and save you money whenever they stumble across new discount opportunities. Not only that, but Small World Vacations could even wind up giving you money? Often these agents will offer bonuses for people who book cruises through them, which is basically free ship credit that you can spend on things like special beverages, dining and signature restaurants, and more. Now you could get anywhere from $50 to $1,000 in onboard credit depending on the cruise you book. Free money? Yes, I would very much like that, thank you. If you're interested in getting a quote, I'll go ahead and link their website down in the description for you. Okay, back to those excursions. We gotta talk about Disney's favorite place to cruise to, Disney's Castaway Key. Castaway is Disney's private island in the Bahamas that most Disney Cruise Line itineraries make at least one stop to visit while sailing, at least if they go through the Bahamas. Now there are tons of things to do while visiting the island for adults and kiddos and teens and the whole family alike, like biking and snorkeling, meeting characters, lounging on the beach, riding banana boats, aqua triking, is striking a word? It is now, parasailing, glass bottom boat touring, and eating more all-inclusive grub along with many, many, many other activities that you can check out on the Port Adventure page too. But one of the most difficult reservations to make when it comes to Disney's Castaway Key is a reservation for one of those private cabanas that give you your own little slice of island for the day and come with included rental equipment like tubes and bikes and snorkels, stocked mini fridges, fresh shower rooms, comfy and shaded lounge areas, and even a call button just in case you need a cast member to come out and bring you a daiquiri. Nifty, right? Since there are only a handful of cabanas on the island and thousands of cruisers aboard each ship, the odds are stacked against you, especially if you're a first time cruiser. But once again, you can always go over to guest services when you first board the ship and ask to put your name down on a walk-up wait list, just in case any last minute availability opens up, which is 
highly unlikely, but hey, a chance is still a chance no matter how slim it may be. Usually the cabanas go to the concierge guests because those folks get first crack at them. And then the platinum cruisers and the pearl level cruisers, the gold level cruisers, you know, all the people that have been cruising 25 times plus and those are the folks that usually get those cabanas, but who knows, always worth a try. Next year, Disney will also be taking passengers out to their new island destination called Lookout Key at Lighthouse Point, located on the island of Eleuthera, also in the Bahamas. And this destination will feature lots of similar offerings to Castaway Key, including private beaches, all-inclusive dining, and lots of port adventures, while also keeping true to the artistic expressions of the native flora and fauna of the Bahamas. The first sailings to Lookout Key will start on June 6th during the three-night cruise aboard the Disney Magic. Now, when you're making reservations for premium onboard activities, don't forget to check out some of the adults-only drink seminars available for of-age guests. There are dozens of different classes that you can sign up for, which varies not just by cruise ship, but by sailing too. Potential seminar options include things like beer tastings, chocolate and liquor tastings, stem to stern wine tastings, and even kickstart your day beverage tastings featuring mimosas and Bloody Marys and non-alcoholic craft juice beverages. There are also mixology classes that you can take where you'll learn how to make layered shots and margaritas, martinis, and more thanks to this professionally led bartending workshop. If you want to learn more about all the different drink seminar opportunities that you might be able to take part in during your next sailing, check out the Disney Cruise website. I will say I've done a lot of these and they're a pretty good deal for the money. It's not that expensive and you do get a lot of good information and several drinks. Sometimes copious amounts of soft serve just won't cut it. Sometimes you need a different kind of dessert, a premium kind, which is where the Disney Cruises sweet shops come into play. Certain Disney cruise ships offer signature sweet shops with several different cookies and candies and chocolates and cupcakes and sundaes and plenty of other dessert goodies that are not included with your stateroom costs. So prepare yourself for that extra expense. So what do these sweet shops look like? Well, it depends on who you're cruising with. On the Fantasy, Sweet On You is hosted by Minnie Mouse and has all kinds of sugary snacks for the family to enjoy. The Wish has Joyful Sweets Candy Shop with desserts and decor all inspired by the Pixar movie Inside Out. And the Disney Dream is home of Vanellope Sweets and Treats, which might be my favorite out of the bunch because the Wreck-It Ralph theming is so incredibly cute here. There's even a racer's screen which keeps an up-to-date ranking of the best-selling Sundays of the cruise. From tea parties to dress up, your kid can receive the ultimate royal treatment on board the Disney Cruise as well. Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique works just like it does over at Magic Kingdom and Disney World. You can book an appointment for your kid to get all fancied up to look like a princess or a royal knight with hairstylings, makeup, and depending on the package you choose, possibly a wardrobe change as well. But exclusive to the cruise lines, your kid can also choose if they'd rather get the Captain Minnie costume package or if they want to join the Pirate League instead just in time for Pirate Night. And what better place for a princess or prince to go next than a royal court royal tea party. On every ship, aside from the wish, you can book the royal court royal tea, which will give you a selection of herbal teas, two courses, and an exclusive meet and greet opportunity with several Disney princesses. On the Disney Wish, however, the royal tea turns into a royal picnic with the one and only Olaf. Every guest who comes to hang out with Olaf at his personal picnic party will get to take home an assortment of gifts like headwear, a cinch bag, a mandolin toy, a troll plush, water bottle, activity book, picnic blanket, and a troll necklace. So be sure to save room in your suitcase. Now these specialty tea parties do not come with your stateroom price. In fact, they can wind up being even more expensive than your fancy schmancy signature dining experience. While a seat for adults will cost $69, per person, a seat for kids is gonna brace yourself, cost $220 per child. So yeah, be sure to discuss that with your group ahead of time and figure out if that extra expense is really gonna be worth the experience and all the extra trinkets in the end. So Disney cruises literally have so much going on at all times of the day. When you take a look at your Navigator app, you'll be able to see every little bingo game and trivia challenge, athletic competition, sketch class, character meet and greet opportunity, you name it list it out right there on your phone or on your TV screen in your room. Each activity on the Navigator app will feature a brief description of said event as well as let you know where it'll be taking place and when it will be taking place. If you're interested in any of those activities and want to make sure you don't forget about them in the midst of everything else going on, be sure to tap the little heart next to the activity you want to remember so the Navigator app can save it for you. Then when it's getting close to that activity's start time, the Navigator app will send you a little reminder message to give you plenty of time to get over to the activity location before it kicks off. You can do this for movies, for shows, for your dining times, and all of these extra little activities too. 
After swimming and exploring and finishing up your fourth ice cream cone of the day, it's only 10 a.m., it might be time for a little extra R&R. I mean, isn't that why you're cruising in the first place, to de-stress and unwind? The Senses Salon and Spa, which are available on all the ships, is the place to find spa treatments and massages and facials and body wraps and aromatherapy, all available for an additional fee. But one of our favorite parts about the spas is the rainforest room, which includes heated loungers, dry saunas, aromatherapy steam rooms, all within a nice relaxing space. While other spa treatments need to be booked well ahead of your trip, you can pay for a day pass to the rainforest room right when you get on the ship. And some passes may also be available that'll give you access to the rainforest room all cruise long. But again, it all depends on the ship and the sailing. While the Census Spa is an adult exclusive area, the Disney Dream, Fantasy, and Magic have a chill spa that's exclusively for teens. The Chill Spa has a unique space with treatment rooms and showers and a separate seating area just for the teen clientele. There's also a menu of services tailor-made for their relaxation and pampering needs, including facials and massages, body treatments, manicures, and pedicures. Speaking of pampering, the Disney Wish offers even more services that'll make you feel fresh and fancy. The Untangled Salon is a Rapunzel-inspired full-service salon that offers haircuts and styling and manicures and pedicures and teeth whitening and skin treatments. And Hook's Barbary is a Captain Hook-themed full-service barbary where you get haircuts, shaves, nail care, skin care, and booze. That's right, I said booze. At Hook's Place, you'll find a hidden bar that's stocked with pre-prohibition drinks like bourbons and vintage whiskey and port and aged rum and premium spirits. Both of these salon services are also an extra cost that you can book in advance. Those last minute walk-ups for either location might be a possibility though, depending on demand. Okay, now that you're a pro on all the different activities aboard the Disney cruises, it's time for you to start deciding what you want to prioritize before you set sail. Keep checking back here with us for even more Disney Cruise Line videos to come, and don't forget to download our free Disney Treasure Guidebook over at DisneyFoodBlog.com slash treasure if you're interested in getting a first look at this brand new mega ship. Thanks for listening, everyone, and thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.